Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to be looking at what you're looking for on the cylinder head section of rebuilding your motor in mechanics. In this case, small block Chevy from the notorious 327 engine. Woo! Let's go! We want to disassemble this. It's relatively straightforward. These usually have a rotator on the top of the exhaust valves. These are intakes, these are exhausts. There's a rotator, it's like a bearing inside there. So when this moves, it makes the exhaust valve rotate so you're less likely to burn the seats and the faces of the valves. In a performance application, that's uh, extra weight, but for a street vehicle, not a bad thing. These are kind of wedged in place with keepers against the retainers, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, and over time, they kind of wedge themselves together that they don't really want to come apart. So, with a little persuasion, if you hit this, not on the valve like that, and not sideways, but just kind of at an angle like so, so it kind of cracks the wedged seal of the retainer, kind of like that, that's all you gotta do. That, that usually cracks the seal enough that you can disassemble it. Now we're going to disassemble this guy. I'm going to tip it up on end. We're going to use the valve spring compressor to compress the valve spring, hence the name. And because this is going to be squeezing a spring under particularly high pressure, we're going to wear some eye protection. When your body is doing the safety squint, that's your body saying, please wear some eye protection. So, eye protection. This part grabs the valve head like that. It's going to go right on like so. This needs a little bit of an adjustment. They fit all kinds of different vehicles. That needs to be threaded in so that this doesn't actually hit the head surface right there. So with that sitting on top of the valve, this end is going to go on there. They're interchangeable ends for small valves and big valves and this uses a cantilever kind of thing to give you some mechanical advantage. So I'm putting that on the end of the valve. I'm putting this in here. Looks like I need a little bit of adjustment, so I'm going to back that off a bit. Give it a squeeze. Mm. And that compresses the valve spring enough that you can get the retainers out. I've got a magnet on a stick because I don't want to put my baby soft fingers in there. And I should be able to pull these out without too much effort. There's one keeper pulled out by the magnet. Don't lose these. I'll be sad. Other side, there's the other one coming out there. These are the keepers. Don't lose the keepers. Once the keepers are out, I usually kind of hang onto this with my pointy fingers and I use my last two fingers to just crack that loose. If you slip and this thing comes off super fast, you're going to wish you were wearing eye protection. Ask the kids who catch this in the face. There's always one. This disassembles like so. We've got the retainer, in this case a rotator for exhaust. We've got the oil shield, and we've got the spring with a flat coil inside, and the flat coil is a damper. It keeps these things from vibrating too much. The valve then comes out like so, and there's the valve. When you're inspecting the valves, you're going to be looking for any weird damage, defect, or anything weird on the stems, on the tips and on the faces. If you've ever sailed over the handlebars on your bicycle and skidded to a halt on the palms of your hands, you know what damage looks like. This actually looks pretty good for an exhaust valve. Exhaust valves take a lot of abuse because all they see is hot, fiery death. They don't really cool down except when they're closed. Whereas the intake valve is always seeing cold fuel and air all the time. So these take a lot of abuse. You're going to use your mad type micrometer skills to measure the worst wear on the worst looking valve. It might wear badly here, it might wear badly there, but you're going to find the worst spot and measure the micrometers, measure it with micrometer and see what your specs are and compare that to whether it's good or bad. Sometimes you'll find someone has different valve stems in here than what you're expecting. Well, wow, it's definitely wore more down here. Interesting. There's two grooves on these Chevy valves. The top one was what the keepers go into. The bottom one is where a little tiny rubber O-ring goes in. And the little tiny rubber O-ring is all Chevy used for an oil seal back in the day, other than this little tin cup. Uh, not the best, but it's what they used forever. <clears throat> we're also gonna look in the combustion chamber. And we're gonna look to see what the condition of the seats are. 
and we're going to look for any cracks that might be. Chevy's are notorious for cracking between the valves and up to the spark plug holes. Uh, we want to make sure we don't see any cracks there. We'll give this a good thorough cleaning. I'm just showing you how to disassemble it and how to look at it. Another thing we want to check is the valve guide clearance. The seat and the effectiveness of its sealing depends on the quality of the guide in there and the clearance that you have. And in this case, we can put the valve in. If we pull it out about a baby finger width, a normal engine is going to open maybe about 10 millimeters. And you can wiggle this back and forth and see what kind of crazy clearances we have. If you've got a good eye, you can have a pretty good idea if this is pooched. Uh, but if you don't, we've got this crazy tool here. This apparatus is a dial indicator. This thing works by freaking black magic and voodoo. I don't know how it works. There's no battery. Switch it to on and it sticks like a magnet. It's crazy. So what you want to do with this is find some way of attaching this. It's like a science apparatus experiment gone wrong. You want this perpendicular with the head of the valve so that I can move this back and forth. So the clearance you want to have needs to be between 0010, if we're going to four decimal places, and 0027. Let's wiggle this. You can zero it if you want to. I don't usually, because I find it annoying to make this thing move, because these tend to be abused. So I'm just kind of looking at how many lines does this move. And if I go there to there, it looks like it's moving about 15 lines. So it's 0, 0150. So if your specs are supposed to be no more than 0, 0, 0027, and we're 0, 0015, this is bad. Kind of like this. You can drink maximum of 27 beer. You just had 150 beer. How do you think you're feeling right now? You're probably feeling red-faced and slurring, face down in a ditch wearing a poodle skirt and I got a tattoo that says Mildred and you're wondering how did I get to Spokane? That's how you're feeling with this. These are shot. They can be fixed. We cover how they can be fixed in the cylinder head section of our theory. Make sure you remember that and bring that information with you. So while wiggling a valve in here gives you an idea of what the clearance is, it doesn't tell you if the problem is the valve or the guide. So uh, another way to do it is with this crazy tool here. Uh, telescope engage, you loosen this end and these ends kind of expand like that. Um, so you squeeze them together, lock it, stick it down the valve guide. It tends to be the most worn at the bottom, possibly also the top, but this part's definitely the furthest from the oil and closest to the heat. And you got to play with it and make sure you've got the absolute biggest part of the diameter. That's a potential for an error. And then we get in here with our micrometer and measure what we think we got inside the valve guide. Make sure you use the ratchet end so you don't over tighten it and just squeeze it closed. That would be dumb. This particular guide measures 352 and a half. That's, uh, that's pretty big. So that's definitely bad. Anyways, once you measure the, what the guide actually is, and you measure the valve stem, then you do math and figure out what your clearance is. Or in this case, that's definitely going to be too much for the guide. That's junk. Another thing you want to check is the flatness of the cylinder head. The cylinder heads are bolted down with five bolts per cylinder head. And if the thing is nice, these stay perfectly flat. We want them to be machined perfectly flat. But if this engine's been overheated, the places where the bolts are will keep the metal down, but in between the bolts is where things can expand and warp. And they'll often expand and warp here, blowing into a coolant jacket, or warping the head between cylinders and blowing the head gasket. In the tool room, above all of the sockets, you will see this bar. It is a straight edge. It's made by Sterrett. It's a really good brand. And it is a perfectly, perfectly, perfectly flat straight edge. And you can set it across here, find the flat feeler gauges, get the smallest flat feeler gauges, and see if one fits underneath. Some kids try to make damn sure it goes through. Don't. Just see if it goes through. If it doesn't go through, it's not warped. If it does go through, put a bigger and bigger one in until you find out how big it is. And you're going to go in a couple of different ways, angles, you want to know. And if, it, if the smallest one goes through, it's warped. And you want to find out how big you have to go. That can be fixed as well. We cover that in the theory units. <clears throat> Make sure you bring that information into the shop with you.
The other thing you're going to inspect is the rocker arms that come on your cylinder heads. They get oil through this hollow push rod. Oil comes up from the lifters all the way up through here to this. It fits into this little pocket and that thing rocks the rocker arm, hence the name. And oil dribbles through that little tiny hole, comes down to here, lubricates the ball, dribbles over the end and hopefully gets some of that, lubricates the valves a little bit. We don't want it all to get sucked by the motor. If you look on the back side, what you're hoping for is that silver ring of contact is not actually covering the hole. If the silver ring is covering the entire hole, then when that hole is covered, no oil is going through here and that'll accelerate a lot of wear. Plus, when it finally is uncovered in the movement of the lifter, that oil is going to squirt and miss everything. We want it to just a constant dribble down the rocker arms. So these are kind of done. I would look at getting new ones. Inside, you're looking at the condition of the ball in here, which doesn't look too bad, and the bottom in there. Everything should be smooth and gorgeous and look nice. Kind of hard to see with this, but you'll be able to see with your eye. I can actually see somewhere in there, but because these are kind of shot, I would look at getting new ones. They are cheap. You can also, you can probably see from the light in here, there is definitely a ridge from this sitting on the valve. These could be machined, but these are so cheap, I would just buy new ones. So these rockers are junk. The guides are junk, the valves seem okay, uh, but measuring that, they are probably junk because they are, uh, what I measured is smaller than spec. To reassemble it, I use a little bit of grease from this grease gun. I put grease on the valve stems to make sure it's well lubricated. I'd slip it through here like so. If I was gonna put this back into use, I would ideally machine this for a modern, better valve seal. Uh, if not, I would get a Ford style umbrella oil seal that would just sit over top and I'd still use the GM one up here. We're going to take the valve spring, we're going to take the oil shield, and we're going to take the retainer and set it on there. This is still set from when we took it apart, so I'm going to set that right on top like so. Squeeze it in. Then I take a little bit of grease on a screwdriver. I put the grease inside here. It makes it sticky and I put this on here. I'm still wearing my eye protection and I'm gonna put this on the end of the valve. I don't want my fingers in here. I value my fingers and I don't want them to get squashed. So that the grease makes it stick. I got the other one, a little bit of grease on there like so. Might have to angle this up, put that guy in. If I were doing the rubber O-rings, I would put those over the valve stem before I put the keepers on. They go underneath the keepers. And then I can pull this little lever. I hold this and just gradually squeeze her out. And there we go. For the engine rebuilding lab, you're only doing one of your cylinder heads. If it's your engine that you're rebuilding, you should do both. That would be smart. And often when you take your own engine apart, you're going to discover just how bad everything is. And it suddenly is not cost effective to rebuild it. However, you can certainly keep things going a whole lot longer for cheap if you're willing to put up with not perfect. That's how we disassemble the valve springs and valves, inspect them, check them, measure them, and then we're going to put them all together. Make sure you give me all the information that you have found and the stuff you find and the defects and how to fix it on your cylinder heads in the engine rebuilding lab. Free curriculum if you're teaching mechanics, you need this information. And thanks for coming out. Take care.